Good morning. In this session, we will continue our discussion in robot kinematics, specifically on spatial transformations which leads to the homogeneous transform. In the last session, we discussed about the position and orientation of any given body with respect to a universal coordinate system. So in this session, we will go ahead and describe about the frame description which is rigidly attached to any moving body and then we will discuss about the mapping between different frames like translated frames, rotated frames and frames in general and finally we will conclude our discussion on one of the most commonly used transform in robotics which is known as homogeneous transform. So first of all regarding the description of a frame which is used to describe one coordinate system with respect to another coordinate system and a typical frame is defined with the help of four vectors where one vector is used to define the position of the body and the other three are used to define the orientation of the body. So as the body and the moving frame are rigidly attached so origin of the body attached frame is chosen as the position vector which defines the position of B with respect to A in a utilitarian way. So here you can see we have fixed frame A having x is x a y a z a and there is a moving frame which is rigidly attached to the body having x is as x b y b and z b so origin of uh, this frame b can be marked with the help of uh, this vector which is used to denote the position of b with respect to a and the orientation of b with respect to a can be shown with the help of a uh, rotation matrix so in nutshell the frame B can be represented like this way on similar basis we can represent different frames like D with respect to A and the position of frame D with respect to A is being marked with the help of P D origin similarly there is frame C which is marked with respect to frame B next comes the mapping between different frames so which means that we want to change the description of the body or any point from one frame to another frame. So first of all in this category comes the translated frames. So where we have let's say two frames which are coincident to start with. Let's say this A represents the universal frame which is fixed having three mutually perpendicular axes as X A Y A and Z A. Then there is frame B which is coincident with frame A and it is marked as X B Y B and Z B. Now the frame B is translated and origin of this frame B with respect to frame A can be shown with the help of uh, this position vector which shows P B origin with respect to A. And let's we consider a point with respect to frame B and this point is denoted with the help of a leading superscript P B. And now with the help of this mapping between different frames we want to describe the same point P B with respect to frame A and its description will be PA. Now as both the frames have same orientation the rotation matrix can be represented by an identity matrix and the mapping of point PB can be represented with the help of a simple vector addition. Over here only the point of concern is that PB origin is defined with respect to A whereas PB is defined with respect to B. So all these superscripts must match but this is a special case in which frame A and frame B both have the same orientation so simple vector addition is possible. Here we can see that the vector PB is not translated only its description with respect to frame A is being changed and finally PB origin with respect to A having all the information required for this mapping. Let's take an example of translated frames. Let's take a point PB which is defined with respect to frame B. So let's say this is X B Y B Z B and we have X A Y A Z A as the three mutually perpendicular axis with respect to the universal frame A. Let's define this point PB with respect to frame B. So we can write this PB having the values as minus 1.530 and the origin of frame B with respect to frame A can be written as 5 units in the x direction, 3 units in the y direction and 0 units in the z direction. So now we can simply do the vector addition. 
which can be written as minus one point five three zero plus five three zero and the final vector PA is written as three point five six zero. So this is the value which is three point five and this is the value of this point which is six units in the y direction. Next comes rotated frames. Let's consider two frames which are coincident. The blue one represents the universal frame and the black one represents the moving frame. So now after having a rotation of angle theta in the counterclockwise direction. So this is a new representation of frame B as x b y b z b and let's can now consider a point in frame b which can be shown like this way as p b and we are interested in finding out its description with respect to frame a in order to do that we need to define the orientation of frame b with respect to frame a and we know that the orientation is defined by attaching a body attached coordinate system and defining its three mutually perpendicular vectors as its three principal axes. So thereafter we can stack these three vectors as the three columns of a rotation matrix as we have discussed in the last session and we also know that the rotation matrix is orthogonal in nature so which means that the rotation of frame B with respect to A can be written as the inverse rotation and this can be written as B or A transpose the transpose of this matrix will give us the inverse and to find out the mapping from frame B to frame A we can write the point defined in frame B and we are interested in finding out the point in frame A but both the frames have different orientation so to perform this mapping we have to pre multiply this with the rotation matrix trailing subscript of rotation matrix B should cancel with the leading superscript of the point which means that now this point PB is defined with respect to frame A which means the point PB which can be written as PX B P Y B P Z B if we pre multiply by this matrix A R B it should give us the point P X A P Y A and P Z B let's take its example so we have the two frames and the frame B is rotated about Z axis by angle 45 degrees in the counterclockwise direction and let's consider there is a point PB with respect to frame B and this point can be written with respect to frame B as let's say it's towards two units in the YB direction and the rotation of frame B with respect to A can be represented like this because this is a rotation about Z axis and the value of this is 45 degree so we can write it as cos 45 degrees minus sin 45 degrees 0 sin 45 degrees cos 45 degrees 0 and 0 0 1 this is a typical rotation matrix about uh, z axis finally we are interested in finding out the description of uh, this point pb with respect to frame a like this way p x a and p y a so which can be written as now p a equal to a r b into p b so we can write it as so if we multiply these two matrices we will get the final result as minus 1.42 1.420 1 so this value is minus 1.42 and this value is 1.42 next we can move on to the general frames where b is not coincident with respect to a and also b is rotated with respect to frame a so it can be shown as the frame b is rigidly attached to point pb so as the frame rotates the point pb also rotates like this way so this is our description of the frame this is x b y b z b and this is the x a y a z a of the universal frame and this is the angle theta which is equal to 45 degrees and then after the rotation the frame also translates this vector represents the origin of frame b with respect to a hence we are having a general frame b which is rotated with respect to frame a and it is also translated from the origin of frame a 
So to represent this kind of mapping, we can write the point PB in terms of frame A like this way. So in this case, the simple vector addition is not possible as frame B is not having the same orientation with respect to frame A. So we have to pre-multiply the point B with respect to the rotation matrix so that all the three vectors are now defined with respect to frame A. And we know that the vector addition is only possible if all the points are represented with respect to the same frame of reference. So for this kind of vector addition, first orientation is kept same with respect to frame A by pre-multiplying it by A R B. And thereafter, the translation between frame A and frame B is achieved with the help of a simple vector addition that is P B origin with respect to A. So this represents the general transformation mapping of a vector from one frame to another frame. So in this general mapping, we have to keep one thing in mind that it is the rotation followed by translation and not vice versa. Next, let's take the example of a general frame. Here we can revisit the same example. So now if we do this kind of operation, we can simply get minus 1.42, 1.42, 0, plus minus 1, 1, 0, which will give us the final answer is minus 2.42, 2.42, 0. So this value is minus 2.42 and this value is 2.4 so next comes the homogeneous transform which means that both rotation and translation of a frame can be represented in a concise form as a single operator like this way where t b with respect to a represents a transformation matrix which contains both the rotation as well as the translation of uh, the frame B with respect to frame A. Representation in this form helps in writing compact and conceptually clear equations. Here you can see the above equation can be written in a much compact form like this way. In order to do this we need to increase the dimension of each vector as well as the matrix by 1. So Earlier the vector PB has a dimension 3 cross 1 which has now been increased by adding this 1. So the description of this new vector is 4 cross 1. Similarly the description of the same point P in frame A is 4 cross 1 now. And in order to do this mapping we have this 4 by 4 transformation matrix which is called as the ATB matrix. So this 4 by 4 transformation matrix can be written by adding a row of 0 0 0 1 as the last row of the 4x4 four four matrix. Now this 4x4 four four matrix has uh, 4 components. The first represents the rotation of B with respect to A which is a 3x3 three three matrix. Next comes the translation of the origin of frame B with respect to frame A which is a 3 cross 1 vector. And then finally you are having this 1 cross 3 vector. And finally there is a 1 cross 1 scalar term. And now if we multiply, the first row of multiplication will give you the same equation back and the second row of multiplication will prove a equality which is equal to 1 is equal to 1. So with this what we have gained is that both translation and the rotation can be represented with the help of a single transformation matrix and this transformation matrix is called as the homogeneous transform. Now let's try to understand the significance of each term. So the first 3x3 three three matrix represents the rotation of frame B with respect to frame A. The next is a 3 cross 1 vector which represents the translation of the origin of frame B with respect to frame A. Next we have 1 cross 3 row vector which is represented by D transpose and it represents the perspective transformation which is typically being used in uh, areas like uh, computer graphics. And finally we are having a scalar w having dimension 1 by 1 which is called as the scaling factor. So both of these parameters are typically used in uh, computer animations whereas from the robotics point of view the last row is typically taken as 0, 0, 0, 1. The disadvantage of using homogeneous transform is that there is a lot of uh, time and memory loss because of multiplication of added ones and zeros. Next let's take an example of homogeneous transform and we can revisit the same example where we are having a frame B 
which is represented by x b y b and z b which is translated as well as rotated with respect to frame a and the data given is the description of point p b with respect to frame b and the origin of this frame b with respect to frame a is written as and the rotation matrix we have already calculated the rotation about z axis and 45 degrees angle in the counter clockwise direction next we can write the homogeneous transformation in expanded form like this way so where the rotational component can be written as like this way which we have already calculated as 0 0.71 minus 0 0.710 0 0.71 0 0.710 0 0.001 and uh, the translational part is given as minus 110 the last row of this transformation matrix is 0 0 0 1 and the description of point in frame b is given as 0 2 0 if we multiply these two matrices we can write the description of the same point in frame a like this way this represents APX, APY, APZ and this is being calculated as minus 2.42, 2.42, 0 and 1. With respect to frame A, so this is minus 2.42 and PYA is equal to 2.42. Next comes the couple of practice problems which you can try. So these are the references for detailed study. Thank you.